A travel router might be one of the most valuable things you can purchase. Not only will it save you a ton of money, but it'll also help keep your devices secure on the internet. But you may be asking yourself, what is a travel router? What can it do? And how much does something like this cost? Well, that is what we're gonna be talking about in today's video, so let's get started. I also want to thank TP-Link for sending out this product and sponsoring this video. So for those of you who are not familiar with a travel router, it is essentially a home router that you travel with. So this is something that you are going to connect all of your devices to, and they will go through the router itself and disperse your connection between all of your devices. Now, what makes this helpful is if you were to go to a hotel, you can connect all of your devices to the single point router here instead of needing to connect all of them individually. Another example may be you're on a cruise ship or an airplane and you want to buy one internet package. You can connect that internet package to this device right here and then share it among all of your devices. Now you have to be within range of this device so it's not like you can just wander anywhere over the cruise ship, but this will help save you money, which makes it kind of a no brainer purchase. But let's take a look at some of the other features we're gonna be getting with this brand new one right here. So this is the AX1500 Wi-Fi 6 travel router. We're going to be getting fast Wi-Fi speeds of up to 1.5 gigs. Now that is going to be split between two bands. So it's going to have the 5 gig band and the 2.4 gig band. I believe the 5 gig band is going to give us 1.2 gigs of speed. And then with that 2.4 gig band, we're going to get about 300 megabits of speed on that one. So this is a pocket size design because it is designed for traveling. We have secure browsing with VPN encryption. So if you do have a VPN client that you use, you can connect it to here. That is something that I have set up and we'll be talking about a little bit later. And we also have easy file transfer. Here are a couple of different scenarios you can do. You can do router mode, hotspot mode, USB tethering mode, and then client mode. And then taking a look on the back here, we have got our USB-C port. And let's actually just take a look at it here on the device. So we have got our USB-C port right here. We have got a port for either 3G or 4G USB. And you can also plug external storage into this and have it shared through any device that is connected to this, essentially making it kind of like a network attached storage, whatever you're going to attach there. You can also use that USB port to tether your phone to the device, sharing your mobile hotspot to the travel router. We've got a WAN port and a LAN port. These are both gigabit ports, which is a nice upgrade from the old version. I think it was like a 10100 port. So we're getting nice fast speeds out of this one right here. We have got venting on the sides. It looks like probably some venting on the front with a light up here. Over on this side with some more venting, we have a couple of options here. So we've got the WPS reset mode. One second for WPS. Looks like six seconds for the reset. And then right here, you can put it into whatever pairing mode that you want to. So we have got our AP mode for your access point. You've got your hotspot and then the router mode. I think most people when they're traveling are going to use it for its hotspot feature but it's just going to depend on what you use. And obviously there are instructions in there to show you. Now on the bottom here are going to be the access to get into it. So we are going to be seeing our username and password on here. So that's how you're going to get access to it. And then from there, you're going to be able to configure all of that up. Additionally, in the box, you are going to get a power port right here. We have got a power cable, which is going to be USB-C to USB-A. And then it also does come with an ethernet cable if you do need that on here. But what I thought I would do is that instead of testing this thing at home here in the office, I wanna actually take it on a trip. So I'm gonna book a trip somewhere tropical, somewhere international, and actually put this travel router to the test. All right, good morning, everybody. We have made it to one of my favorite places to go, and that is Cabo San Lucas, Mexico. I just got a coffee this morning. Everyone else is eating breakfast. We came with a group of people, but I wanted to get back to the room early because I want to test out this travel router. We can see what it's actually capable of because the hotel itself it does have Wi-Fi, so I can just connect all my stuff to Wi-Fi, but we're gonna get some added benefits with this travel router. So. Let's go ahead and get that set up and take a look at what it's capable of. Okay, so here is what we are going to be testing out. We have our travel router right here. What I'm gonna do is we're going to plug it into an ethernet port in here and do a speed test. I've got my Cat5 cable right here. We have our power and I also bring this charging 
power station here because it does have AC on one side. We've got regular USB on this side and then USB-C over here. So I kind of have the best of all worlds in here. What I like to do sometimes is just pop off the power brick here, plug it right in, and then you can kind of have like a mobile travel router. I can take that down to the beach. I did use this in the airport where I just plugged it into the airport using these two right here. And they kind of just sit nicely on top of each other. But let's go ahead and I'm gonna get this laptop started up and let's do some testing on how to set this up, what the features are, and then also do some speed tests. All right, first things first, what I wanna do is I want to do a speed test of just the hotel Wi-Fi. So I'm connected to hotel Wi-Fi right now. And let's go to my speed tests. Yes, go ahead and use my location and go. Well, let's just get a speed test of kind of a baseline of what we're working with here. Now, this is the hotel Wi-Fi that we are connected to. All right, so we've got to 25 download and 30 upload speed that we're getting from hotel Wi-Fi. So I'm gonna go ahead and set up this router and we'll get a better idea of what this thing is capable of. Now, one thing that I wanna do is we can connect this directly to the hotel Wi-Fi and share it that way, but I brought my Ethernet cable here, we're going to plug it into the Ethernet port, which is on the other side of this wall right behind me. And then we're gonna get all of this set up. So let me go ahead and get this plugged in, get it powered on, and we'll start testing that out. All right, here we go. So it popped up, it is now connecting right now from the laptop. So I do have the Steve Does Travel 5G because I set all of this up at home. So at home, I got everything configured and set up. So now all of my devices can automatically connect to it. We got the laptop, we got the phone, we got my wife's phone. So we can all be using it. Go a second here to finish connecting up. And then we're gonna go ahead and do a speed test. Now on the phone here, let's get that connected. So we're gonna go to settings, have this one pop up here. So the Steve Dose Travel is the 2.4 gig network. There we go, we've got the 5 G. So we're gonna switch over to that now connected. And let's go ahead and do another speed test on the phone. So let's see, we got 25 down and 30 up. Let's go ahead now and test it using the travel router and see if we're gonna be able to get a faster speed from it. Now keep in mind this travel router is on the other side of this giant stucco wall that is behind me. Oh yeah, we're getting quite a bit faster speed, which I would expect being connected to an ethernet port. About 94 down, uploads about 90. So obviously quite a lot faster than we were getting before. Let's go ahead now and take a look on the laptop at what we're capable of doing. So looking here at the laptop, we are now connected to the router with the 5G. So I'm gonna bring up an internet browser here. We are going to type in our TP link wifi.net, which is going to allow us to connect to the travel router. Awesome, and we are connected up. We see that we now have a yellow check mark for the internet, meaning we're good to go. We can see the actual router itself, and we can see we have a three clients connected to it right here. So right now we've highlighted the internet. It's going to give us our data right here with our IP address. We can go ahead and click on the actual router itself, and it'll give us our information for our wireless SSID names and passwords, also what channel it is set to. And then at the very bottom, we do have the options of turning guest Wi-Fi on and off. We've also got our performance. We can see our memory usage and CPU load, and then we can see what ports are being used. So my WAN port is being used and we have a 100 megabit full duplex plugged into it and then nothing plugged into the WAN port. So that's another option. I can take a second cable and plug it into the laptop if I want to do that, but I think I'm gonna be getting pretty good speeds on the laptop regardless, I don't need to do that. If I click on clients here, I can see what clients are connected to the device. We can block them if we want to. We can see right here, we have got our 5G interface and we can also see the signal strength, which is pretty cool to see if somebody is within range. We have got our bit rate information right here, how long things have been connected. And now let's go ahead and do a speed test here. Use the good old speedtest.net and let's go ahead and go and see if we're getting the same speeds on here as we were on the phone. Because my assumption here is that at the hotel, it is 100 meg up and down. Now I did test it not using the router itself and it did test at the same speeds here. So it is finding an optimal server and then we'll go ahead and have that speed test run. 
All right, so a speed test, we have got 90 down and 94 up on here. Pretty good, I'm impressed with that. It's a lot better than the, what was it, 25 that we were getting just on the hotel Wi-Fi itself. Now, cool thing here is that with the travel router, I can connect it to the hotel Wi-Fi. I can plug it into here so it is powered on. And if I wanted to, I could take that down to the cool and use it down there to share the connection with all of the devices. Now I wanna show you why or some reasons why that might be a benefit. All right, so we see our network map set up here where we can see everything that we did. Now, if we go over here to wireless, we have our options here for wireless. This is where you're going to set up your SSID name, your security, passwords, current channel width, channel auto, um, all of that good stuff is going to be here under your wireless settings. And then we're gonna take a look at advanced. We've got a lot of options here in advanced. We're gonna look at our network, our internet. Now, I'm not gonna cover everything on here. You can set up a DHCP. And if you want to enable or disable that, we have also got our option for setting up custom IP address pool. So you can set that up too if you want to change any of that stuff. Below here, we have got our wireless options. So if you wanna change anything on your wireless, but what I really want to point out down here is your VPN client. So if you do want to set up a VPN and you don't want to set it up on every single device individually, you can set it up here through the VPN client. So anything that connects to the travel router will go through the VPN. And that's what I like about having the travel router and the benefit of that. Because if you think that the internet that you're using at the hotel is secure and safe, I would guess again, it may have some layer of protection from the outside world, but not necessarily from other people who are also connecting to the Wi-Fi here at the hotel. So having a VPN client set up on your travel router and using that as an extra layer of security is something that I would highly recommend. So for me, I have set up one, I have a PIA, which is private internet access. That is the one that I currently use for my VPN and you guys can check that out. I'll have links in the description for you guys to check that out. Plus everything that I'm using in this video, all of those links will be below which I'm sure you guys are aware of. But uh, for this one, I'm gonna go ahead and have it enabled. So we'll go ahead and enable it, connecting right to now. So we have the name that I gave it, the open VPN source with all the things that I have plugged in when I set it up. All right, it does take a minute or so to connect. So while it's connecting, we can take a look at a few of the other things. We have a VPN server you can set up, IPv6 if you wanna do that, Smart Life. So you can connect this with Alexa if you want to use a voice assistant. And then we've got our system down here. So it's gonna give us options for doing a firmware update. Always recommend doing firmware updates on here. We got administration, backup and restore, system logs, diagnostic, time and language. You can reboot it. You can control the LED on the front. There's just so many things that you can do with this device. But now that I've got mine set up, I'm gonna go ahead and hit the pool. Enjoy the rest of this vacation. We'll talk in a sec. All right, we're on our way home now. Got to the airport a little bit early and I wanted to get some work done. So I took out the travel router. So not only can I get my laptop, my phone and my wife's phone all connected up, but it is going to be safe behind that VPN connection. But I can spoof that I am in the US and be able to get the shows that we want on Netflix and also allow my wife to stream Pandora, which we found out you can't do in Mexico. But using the VPN and turning on the location of me being in the US, all of a sudden Pandora works again. And so she's happy, I'm happy, and like always, the travel router gets the job done. Well, traveling is fun, but it's always good to be back home. On this trip, I put this guy through its paces, not only using it in an airport, in an airplane, but at the hotel that we actually stayed at. The only thing that we haven't used it on is a cruise ship. So maybe another trip is in store to test this guy out. And I gotta say, for as affordable as this thing is right here, if you were going to go on, especially a cruise, you gotta pay per device per day to to connect anything to the internet. Being able to buy one package on a cruise, connect it to this guy right here, and then share that with all of your devices, this thing is gonna pay for itself within a day. It is such a good savings and something that I would highly recommend to do if you do any traveling at all. If you want to know more about this device or check it out, I will link in the description below. But now that you've got your travel network set up and you're secure and good to go, what about your home network? How is that set up? I am working on a network series right now. If you guys wanna check that out, check out this this link right here to the playlist. This is a beginner guide for home networking. So nice and easy and simple to follow and it'll get you all set up and ready to go. If this video is helpful, give it a thumbs up and let me know that you liked it. As always, don't forget to subscribe for more content like this and I'll see you guys in the next video.